colder temperatures, cozier fabrics, and warmer color palettes. That's what fall is all about. And guys, we've just finished fall, or as we call it here in Australia, autumn. So I'm gonna go through with you my fall or autumn handbags ranked. And it's all gonna be about those color schemes. And what's more important is not to worry about what other people are saying about handbags, but to always carry the right handbags that suit you. Okay, guys, so we're going to go through some close-ups about these handbags. So starting with handbag number nine. This is my Vintage Chanel Series Zero White Handbag. This is her with the 24 karat gold plated term lock right there now she was ranked number nine because i really didn't go anywhere fancy this fall but she is so beautiful i had to include her and white is such a great fall color i mean really it's a year-round color so don't even worry about what i'm saying this is a fall color it's a year-round color but for me i didn't have the right sort of occasion to wear her to this fall all i really did was just go to work come home maybe like one or two things I attended. So I wasn't really going anywhere that warranted this bag. And I used to make an effort to rotate my designer handbags when I was going on my dog walks, but I got lazy this fall. So this one didn't quite make it up there in the rotation, but she was so gorgeous. She just had to be included. White, gold, think about her dressed up against those four autumn colors like beige and black. She just had to make it in there. But what I love about this bag is her capacity. She has really, really good capacity. So I'm currently using a bag organizer. So I'm currently using two bag organizers, just this linen one, which I made myself. And then I'm using this one that I bought from Timu just to give it a bit more structure. So this is just to protect the inside of the bag from getting dirty. And this is the one for like actual organization and actual structure of the bag. Okay guys, so bag number eight. Dun -dun. This is another vintage Chanel bag. Guys, Chanel's ranking at the bottom of the four list this time. So you may be thinking, oh, how come Chanel's ranking so low? It's because I just really didn't go anywhere and I didn't put much effort into rotating my handbag this time. So it's not the handbag's fault, it's my fault. This is a beautiful lambskin bag. This leather is so gorgeous. Again, we've got that gold turn lock, that plated gold turn lock. This time we have double grommets, so we compare her to the first handbag. There was only single grommets. This one's got double grommets. That means I can actually double up the strap or I can have it single. So I love the versatility there. And guys, look at how unique this pattern is, this curved chevron pattern. So this is definitely a rarer bag. It is a single flap. So both bags are single flap. Again, now I use a bag pillow just to help keep its shape. This one actually fits the mini classic flap. And I also use a bag organizer that I just got from Timu. It's actually the same as the one in that bag. This one actually has a burgundy interior. There we go. Now guys, you can't go wrong with a black handbag during fall. Now again, it's not really so much about the particular bag that I'm showing for you, but it's just about picking bags that suit your color scheme and what your needs are in terms of size and structure for the bag. Now this fall for me, I was all about the cross bodies and the smaller handbags. So in this particular year, I wasn't really using any totes. Now guys, that's the end of the Chanel for the four handbag list. But if you actually wanna see my whole Chanel collection, cause I do own more bags than these two, I'll link my vintage Chanel collection up above and in the description box down below for you. Bag number seven. This is my vintage Louis Vuitton dark green men's clutch. This is called the pochette curad. This is in the tiger leather. You can see it's got this texture to it. It's like a hard leather. And this is in a dark green color, which is called Epikia or Epicia. I could be butchering the pronunciation. I'm sorry about that. And it's got this big gold S lock. Now guys, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I'm a big fan of the S lock. I've got this S lock here. And I've also got one, two, three. So I've got one, two, three S-Lock handbags up there. They're called the Monceaux on the side and the Concorde in the middle. I'm a 
big fan of the Louis Vuitton S lock and this one has a gorgeous gold one here now this one the color is just for me so fall if you're someone who likes color in the fall time if you just go for the darker shades of spring colors it usually works and some people may think green is that really like a, a color you can easily pair you'd be surprised at how neutral dark green or dark many colors actually is some people might go oh i don't wear green or i don't wear things that match with green guys don't even worry about it like the fashion that you wear, the handbags you wear, it only needs to suit you. It doesn't really need to suit someone else. So it's what you feel comfortable in and what you like. And personally, what I found is that I ended up liking the green against many outfits, ones that I didn't expect to match. In the end, I didn't even need to really think about the outfit to go with the handbag because it just ended up being, for me, sufficiently going with many, many outfits. It just worked. Now, if you just want to open this up, you'll see... Now it is a men's clutch, so it has a strap. Really, really basic on the inside, one main compartment, and it's leather lined. So if you get spillage or whatever, it's not going to be fabric and it soaks in. Really easy to clean up. Now remember these vintage Louis Vuitton bags? They usually have these peely, sticky lining. So if you're not used to that, you might be put off by that on the secondhand market, but if you are used to it, you may find it easy to just clean it out yourself or to pay a bag spy to clean that out for you. Now, I am a crossbody kind of girl, so I ended up converting this to a crossbody bag by attaching these D rings here. So it wasn't too hard. I watched some tutorials and I also made a tutorial, which I'll link down below for you. Now remember, all these handbags, most of them have their own review video that I've made. So if you want to know more about any of these handbags, just check down below or I might have linked them up above because I've got reviews on heaps of them so you can see more about it. Okay, so handbag number six. This is the original Coach Cassie. So some of you may already know this as a great alternative to the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse. This is not the Cassie 19. This is the original Cassie, which is the same size as the Pochette Matisse. And guys, this is in a gorgeous navy blue color with the gold hardware. For me, I wasn't able to afford the Pochette Matisse. It was not possible for me, but the Coach Cassie was. And I ended up buying this. This was my first ever purchase from Joma Shop. So for the Americans there, the Coach Cassie, when it was released, the original one, was so easily accessible and the price was so good. There were lots of people buying the original Coach Cassie for less than 200 US dollars. They were getting it for like you know, 170 US dollars. So many people were getting such great prices on many different variations and prints of the original Coach Cassie. For us Australians, it was so hard to get the Coach Cassie. Number one, we could only really buy it if you wanted to buy it domestically from the Coach Direct. It was never on sale and the price was like 600 Australian dollars. That is a lot more than the American retail price. Um, so this I ended up buying from Joma Shop and with the taxes and delivery and the bag, it cost me about 400 something Australian dollars at that time, which is still way more than what the Americans were paying. But by Australian standards, you know, it wasn't too bad of a deal. Now this I can see why lots of people loved the Pochette Matisse because this is a really great bag. Now, this isn't the Pochette Matisse. This is the Coach Cassie, but I got the basic shape and the function of the Pochette Matisse, and it's a really great bag. So the compartments are really spacious. I can fit. I like to go out with my cans of drinks. So I'll show you. Guys, I really like drinking sparkling water in a can. I don't know if any of you have the same... I don't know if anyone else likes it. I don't know if you think it's weird, but I really love drinking sparkling water in a can. And I love to take these out with me if I'm going for a big day out. So I can fit two, possibly even three cans in there, but then I wouldn't have much room for anything else. So at least two cans plus my personal belongings. If I really wanted to get three and then minimize my personal belongings. And then when you close it up, even with the cans. Okay. 
So it still doesn't even look way too fat, even with the cans. I mean, it's going to have the weight of the two cans, which is a bit heavy. But I love to wear it with this thick guitar strap. So that really takes the pressure off my shoulders. So guys, if you are someone who likes to carry drinks, you can fit two cans. Now this is a cheaper bag compared to the Pochette Matisse. But it's basically the same thing. So, you know, compared this to the Australian price of Pochette Matisse, I can't afford it anyway. So this is a great bag and navy is such a great fall colour. Okay, bag number five. This is my super vintage Louis Vuitton. I believe the name is Sac Vendôme. Now this one has a padlock shaped turn lock and this gorgeous thick vintage Louis Vuitton canvas and this vintage treated leather. It is not the Vachetta. So it is water resistant. No need to be scared of rain as you would with Louis Vuitton Vachetta bags. But check this out, gorgeous padlock turn lock. And it does have an adjustable strap. So at the moment I store it like this because I think that that is probably the safest way because it's starting to have um, pressure cracks on this part of the strap. So I'm just trying to not cause more cracks there. So it's got these snap buttons. One, two. And then you just snap them here. And now you have a longer bag. If you want to wear it as a shoulder bag, you snap it here and snap it here. And now you have a short shoulder bag. Now this one ranked a bit lower because the strap is a tad short for crossbody. And if you have too many things in there, the profile can get a bit wide, which then makes it awkward looking if you're wearing it crossbody, a bit short and a bit fat. So the bag itself has a vibe that I love, but just the way it sits on my body, I don't always love. So it does depend on what I can carry. Now let's take a peek on the inside. Leather interior, one compartment, two compartment, three compartment, four compartment, five compartment. So vintage that they didn't even start using the Vitonite yet. No sticky pockets, no peeling pockets, no cleaning out any pockets. There is no back pocket, by the way. This bag was a treat to buy vintage because it required no maintenance. I just gave it a wipe down to get rid of any dirt and that was it. Gorgeous hardware, so gold. So the strap length for this is what pushed it down the ranking a little bit. So sometimes I don't want to reach for it for that reason, but I love this handbag. It just had to make it in for fall winter. Bag number four, another vintage Louis Vuitton. This is called the Sac Bordeaux. This has a gorgeous LV in a circle that's in the hardware. Guys, you might have seen the new Salmer BB from Louis Vuitton. This has like the same logo, except the Salmer has like a, I believe to be like a hot stamped logo and not actually hardware. Whereas this is actually hardware. Guys, for me, I mean, when you're paying for these bags, I believe we deserved hardware logo over hot stamped logo. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Do you think I'm being like too picky that when you're paying thousands of dollars that a hot stamped logo is a bit disappointing? Like I think a hardware logo is what, what you should be getting. Okay, now this is a bag I love to use because it's a two-in-one because you can actually snap off the straps and wear it as a clutch. And then I can use it as an evening bag if I'm going somewhere. Now, I just recently took this to a hen's night and I used it with the strap because in the end I'm a crossbody kind of girl. But... I just wanted the option that if we were going to, you know, be a bit more fancy that I could take it off. And I've worn this to plenty of weddings as well. Now, I love this. Just It's just a really like fuss free. It's just one main compartment. It's just one main compartment. One zippered compartment. I did have to clean this out because it was sticky and peeling. 
and there is a back pocket there. Now the back pocket didn't become sticky and peeling. So I only had to clean one pocket out, not the back pocket. But you can still find lots of these in the pre-love market where the back pocket is also bunged up and sticky and peeling. So do consider that when looking on the pre-love market. It also comes in a PM size. Sometimes I think about the PM size and wish, should I have bought the PM size? Is the GM size? Because this is the GM. Is this too boxy on me? But look, in the end, I like to have the option of carrying the right amount of things. So in the end, I think the GM is probably a better option for me over the PM. Besides, I have started collecting a lot of smaller bags and I would have just end up with too many smaller bags. I need to have variety in my collection. Bag number three. This is my newly purchased vintage St. Cloud GM in the Epi leather in this beautiful cognac Kenyan fawn color. Now guys, this is to me my vintage alternative to the modern Louis Vuitton epi in the cognac color so guys the new salmer bb this is one of my alternatives or dupes to the salmer bb in the epi because the color is just to me so the same and the function of this bag versus the salmer bb very comparable so i'm going to show and link that video up above and in the description box down below and you can judge for yourself do you think this is a good dupe for the new salmer bb that seems to be the it bag from louis vuitton this season so let's open her up so you can see she's got this like a stirrup uh, hardware here and you open her up and she is a one compartment girl one main compartment girl with a zippered pocket now my zippered pocket i have not yet cleaned it out it's got tarry sticky stuff in it so it's not it's not fully usable in this state and she has a back pocket too now the back pocket also needs to be cleaned out i just haven't been bothered yet guys it's it can be like a big job to do this and i have a tutorial video on how to do it which i'll link up above and in the description box down below for you so if you want to do it you want to give it a go you, you can try it but what i love about her is she's just such an easy bag to use now remember guys whenever choosing a bag for yourself always think about the minimum things you need as your non-negotiables to carry around and you need to make sure that your things will fit into whatever handbag it is you are looking at and guys always go for a style that fits you not a style that fits a trend not a style that's with hype because most likely once the hype ends your love for that bag will end too not to say that your needs don't change over time and something that suits you now will always suit you forever but at least you know, you want to be authentic to you and your needs and trends, even though we can get really excited for them and we can get swept up away from them. Trends are not authentic to us all the time. Sometimes we get caught up in a trend that is actually not in alignment with our needs. And then we kind of end up in this weird place where we bought something that we just wanted to love so much. And then when we get it, we realize, oh, I don't, actually don't really love this at all. And even though you can sell your handbags on, it can be a loss of money, very stressful and very time consuming. And we want handbags to be our happy place, not our stress place. But guys, if you want just like a basic bag, and when I mean basic, I mean not too many bells and whistles, one that functions well. And guys, I love that a bag can stand up on its own on the table. Is that a weird thing? Like, is that a weird thing to love? I love it when a bag can hold itself up instead of like flopping over or falling down. It just makes it so easy to admire the bag and just see it sitting there, standing up on its own. I don't know, guys. You tell me, do you have the same feeling about bags that can stand up on its own? Leave me your comment in the comment section down below if you think A, it's weird, or B, you've got the same love for that. Okay, bag number two. Dun dun. This is the same handbag again. This was the St. Cloud GM. This is the St. Cloud PM. So guys, I bought this bag this year and I unboxed it on my channel and I'll link that up above and in the description box down below. For a long time, I was actually against the PM size because I thought that is way too small. But for some reason this year, I don't know if I'm late to the party, but I started getting into smaller bags. I know people have been into smaller bags for a while now, a couple of years now, but I just started getting into it. And I already love the GM. And I just saw this at a good price. So it was 250 US dollars. And I thought, you know what? Let's try it. 
I don't know, it's an impulse decision, impulse buy. And I know on this channel, I've talked against that, but I, I know that I have a problem with impulse purchases or impulse control in general. So I gave in at that time. Luckily for me, it worked out well. And I turned out to love this handbag because I don't always love the things that I buy impulsively. And I really want to help us, our community of handbag lovers to reduce our amount of impulse purchases. But I myself do it too. I'm a huge hypocrite. Now, if we open her up, we get a leather interior one main compartment there is a slip pocket at the back there and a back pocket now a lot of people who are petite would prefer the pm against their body frame sometimes with the pm is not enough room to carry what i want but most of the time i'm not really going anywhere that requires anything more than a card holder and i carry this little thing that one of my friends gave me from her overseas trip and i just put excess things in there so most of the time what I'm carrying is these two plus my phone. So I can now get away with using smaller bags. So I used to be a long wallet kind of girl and there was no way a long wallet's going to fit in here. And you can see this is my currently used bag because I've still got my dog walking poo bag thing stuck to it. Now this bag is just really cute and I ended up making a comparison video between my St. Cloud PM and my St. Cloud GM to help those who are confused as to which size they would like to buy. So we go through lots of things like size comparisons, mod shot comparisons, capacity comparisons. So guys, if you're interested in that, I'll link that video up above and in the description box down below for you. Now we're at bag number one. Dun, 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 dun. Now this is not a designer bag. This is a dupe for a designer bag. Now, when I say dupe, I'm not talking about a replica, but this is a bag that looks like a designer bag, but it doesn't have any branding or anything. And it is clearly not that designer bag. So this is not a fake. This is not a counterfeit. This is not a replica bag. This is a bag that I got off Timu for about 25 Australian dollars. This is a dupe for the Hermes. And I think it's called the Hermes Kelly Desorde. Or it's like a distorted version of the Kelly. So there's the Hermes version and this is the Timu version. There is no Hermes branding. This is not a fake. This is not a replica. This is in a light blue color with silver hardware. Guys, if you watch my channel, you would know that basically none of my handbags currently have silver hardware, but I really like it on this bag. But when I bought this bag, I initially wished it was gold hardware, but then the silver kind of grew on me. Oh, it's got feet on the bottom, by the way. I just thought this bag looks so interesting. Now, the Hermes one is like not even realistic for me, but I thought this was just so interesting. And I like that it only has like one single. Having just one single makes it so much easier to get in and out of the bag because number one, I don't even need to use the single. And two, by only having one single, it is not pinched on the other side because usually when you have a sangle and it's it's it would be tight on the side of the sangle and so both sides are pinched in and you need to loosen them to get things in and out but just having one sangle makes it in my opinion much more easier because i have a dupe of the kelly mini and it's really hard to get in and out of that bag because the sangles are always blocking it bear in mind like they're timu bags not hermes bags so maybe on an hermes bag that sangle issue would be a lot smoother but I've never had a Kelly before. So I am just commenting from my limited experience with these Timu bags. But guys, so a designer dupe made it to number one on my four winter actually used list. This was super easy to use for dog walking. I could fit my main things in this compartment and then I could just shove smaller unnecessary things in this compartment or just not use it at all. The only downside was because both sides have a turn lock you know no matter which way I wore it one side would kind of like hit my body so that's a negative on it but I ended up loving this baby blue silver hardware combination and I number one didn't think I, that would be a four color that I would like and number two I didn't think I like silver hardware bags so this bag completely took me by surprise I mean I love feed on handbags if you guys watch my channel you guys know I love feed on handbags and this, again, this handbag can stand up on its own, so I love that too. But guys, this can go cross-body really nicely. And, and who would have thought? 
Out of all those designer handbags, this Timu one made it to the top. In the end, it is the basic shape of the Hermes Kelly, the distorted one. So, I mean, that's probably got something to do with it. But you guys, for any of you who have the Kelly distorted, leave a comment down below. How do you like the real deal? Okay, guys, so tell me in the comment section down below, what are your four handbags? Give me your top five four handbags from your collection. Tell me the brand and the style. I would love to explore more styles that are in your collections. And if you guys haven't already seen my entire Louis Vuitton vintage collection, I'll link that here for you to carry on with next.